Many of you have seen the recent viral video of a paraglider flying dangerously close to the top of the Great Pyramid of Giza with his GoPro, with some astute people noting that this footage snapped hieroglyphics on the very top of the pyramid. Although many believe these sites be littered with hieroglyphs, the mainstream paradigm would have you believe that this is, in fact, a fallacy. There are no tombs, mummies, or indeed hieroglyphs to be found anywhere upon or inside the Great Pyramids. The question then is, what is this writing? Is it true hieroglyphs? And if so, what do they say? We do not condone the climbing or indeed vandalism or decisions to climb and possibly damage these astonishing and priceless relics. Yet the question remains, are these authentic? If so, why cover them up? Well, we may be able to explain why these hieroglyphs could indeed be covered up, and in addition, also back up the hypothesis that the Egyptians did not build the pyramids, but rather merely re-inhabited these astonishing ruins, adapting lost technologies discovered and unraveled within. Subsequently, using the pyramids to impress and intimidate their neighbors and convince the world they built them, not only then, but all the way into the modern era. Yet I digress. Along with this photograph of hieroglyphs corroborating the aforementioned hypothesis, we also have the array of photographs displaying casing stones, some detached, possibly due to past cataclysm, protecting stones often many hundreds of tons in weight that are clearly of a far greater age than that of what we feel are more modern yet still ancient conservation efforts, we feel later undertaken on the pyramids themselves. Furthermore, in addition to the water controversy theory, which presents the evidence for Anubis Lake around what is now the Great Sphinx, the face of the Sphinx itself displays significant rain damage. Yet we feel the most compelling and supporting evidence for the pyramid's true age is the layers of salt sediment that were removed from lower chambers all over Giza during its re-excavation. This suggestive submersion would explain not only the extreme corrosion present on an older surface-level stonework, but the abrupt end of this very ancient civilization, who, we posit, were responsible for not only the Great Pyramids, but ruins all over the Earth. How could we have varying levels of casing stones, each of a different stone, and some even of a polygonal nature, yet the stone behind be far greater eroded? How could there be hieroglyphs beneath where there would have been a capstone, if these relics were not in the condition we see them today when re-inhabited? We find such questions, and indeed the hieroglyphs themselves, highly compelling.